Hello guys, um, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Bongani. Um, guys, today, as I've stated before, that we are going to look at protein synthesis. So today is the day to look at this uh, fantastic and a very simple topic. Now, before we continue, I'd like to remind those who are just here for the first time to su subscribe to my channel, to like, and of course, comment down below. And last but not least, please don't forget to share this to your friends and tell their, their like your friends to share to their friends so that they can also get this um, information. It's very important information, especially for those who are in high school uh, matriculants. Okay, let's just start by looking at what we are going to discuss uh, on our lesson. So we are going to discuss what is protein synthesis it's very important to understand each and every topic that we are going to tackle okay you need to understand the definition you know get the gist of what's going on and then secondly we're going to look at where and how and why does uh, protein synthesis happen why you need to ask yourself why does it happen where does it happen and how does it happen okay and then uh, thirdly, we are going to discuss the three types of RNAs. And last but not least, we're going to look at the involvement of DNA and RNA in protein synthesis. And also uh, two very important processes which are part or which are the main processes of protein um, synthesis, which are your transcription, which is the first process that happens in the nucleus, and the other process or the second process is translation which uh, takes place in the ribosomes now what is protein synthesis um protein synthesis is actually the process by which proteins are made in in a cell of an organism to form enzymes hormones and new other structures of a cell in simple terms guys as the weight itself, remember in life sciences or in biology, we all know that synthesis means making something, producing something, creating something. So here we are producing proteins in our cells. Okay? So where does this process occur? Okay, this process occurs in a cell of an organism, just like that. And how does it occur? It occurs um, via or through particular processes, which we have got two of them, namely transcription and translation by using DNA and RNA. And then why is this process important? It is important because uh, we make up certain molecules which are made up of uh, building blocks called amino acids, you know, to form what we call um, proteins okay um examples of proteins that we have in our bodies is our hemoglobin which is a very important um pigment which um actually carries oxygen okay so that pigment is found in our red blood cells and then we also have insulin which plays a very important role in um reducing the amount of sugar in our blood to protect us from having what we call sugar diabetes and that is found in the pancreas and then we have got the collagen as well which is found on our skin so guys there's so many many other proteins that we can actually explain but that's not important at this moment you need to understand that this process is a process whereby we produce proteins now we also need to look at the three types of RNA. They are very important because we are going to talk about them because they have specific functions. Um, uh, during uh, They play uh, different functions during protein synthesis. Okay, the first one that we're going to look at is our messenger RNA, which is simply abbreviated as mRNA. Okay, this one is important because it's it's the one that carries information from the dna in the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm okay and then the second one is the ribosomal rna or r r 
DNA. So this one is actually the structural component of, of ribosomes. And last but not least, we have got what we call transfer RNA, which is abbreviated as tRNA. This one, it transports uh, building blocks called amino acids to the ribosome during translation to help build up an amino acid chain or to build polypeptide chain or to build up proteins. Okay, now we are actually going to look at the first process of uh, protein synthesis because remember guys, as I've told you that protein synthesis consists of two main processes. Okay, now the first important process that occurs is a process that we call transcription. Now, what happens there? The first thing to happen is that the double helix as it unwinds. What will happen now? The strand will start to be separated. Each strand, the double stranded DNA will be unzipped or it will be separated because now what happens is that the weak hydrogen bonds are broken down to form two separate strands. Okay, now guys, um, protein, sorry, transcription occurs when we have the, when we, um, what happens? Let me just put it in like this. So what happens is that now during DNA replication, you know, uh, transcription occurs. What will happen is that now DNA will be copied into RNA, especially mRNA. So mRNA will be copied into what? So the DNA will be copied into to mRNA, or it will be transcribed into mRNA by an enzyme called a RNA polymerase, but that enzyme is not important for you guys, but just know that an enzyme, a particular enzyme, would actually uh, make the DNA to be copied by mRNA. Okay. In simple terms, what happens is that mRNA copies certain information from DNA, and then once it gets that information, it goes out. It comes like during DNA replication, once the strands are now separated, it sneaks in or it just goes in faster, quickly, and it copies the information from DNA and then it leaves. Okay. And then now, remember as this information is copied. Remember, only one strand is going to be used as a template to form mRNA or to copy the information, okay, using free RNA nucleotides from the nucleoplasm. So, guys, nucleoplasm, you all know this. It's like the cytoplasm of a nucleus, but we call it a nucleoplasm. Now, this mRNA is complementary to, to the DNA, meaning now the nitrogenous spaces, they have to be what they have to bond to certain uh, nitrogenous spaces that they always bond with. For example, um, uracil will always bond with adenine, um, guanine with cytosine. Okay. Now, after that has occurred, the mRNA now has the coded message for protein synthesis. Once now the mRNA has copied, a, like copied. Um, a particular message or a particular part of DNA now, it is coded. So it has coded message for protein synthesis. Remember DNA is copied into RNA or into mRNA, right? Now, once it has been copied into mRNA, the mRNA now, it is has got the coded message for protein synthesis. Now it has to leave the nucleus, hence is going to leave the nucleus via what we call the nuclear pores and it's going to attach itself to the ribosome. Okay, now moving right along, guys. What I also want to uh, explain is that now, as this mRNA leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pores and it binds or it is, it is attached to the ribosome. Guys, remember mRNA, it contains uh, triplets, which we call uh, cordons. 
you know those are base triplets they're not genus base triplets okay those triplets we call them cordons okay now moving right along to translation now during translation there's a particular uh, uh, rna or a type of rna that we spoke about which is what we call the transfer rna this one will actually carry specific amino acids right and then this it brings these amino acids into the mrna that is attached to the ribosome now this tRNA it has also its a uh, base triplets or nitrogenous base triplets called anticodons. So guys, these anticodons they always have to match to the triplet that is found to codons. Sorry guys, anticodon has to match codon. For instance, if maybe our codon consist of three guanines so it means now our anticodon it has to contain three cytosines okay as this mrna it brings a uh, required amino acids to the ribosome these amino acids become attached by what by what we call peptide bonds these bonds are very important to know because you might be asked about which bonds join amino acids to form a polypeptide chain or to form proteins. Now, these peptide bonds, they bond all these amino acids to form a protein or to form a polypeptide chain as simple as that now I want us to look at the diagram because I feel like it's going to be easier if we use a diagram to, uh, uh, to explain protein synthesis. Now, as you can see, number one, the DNA now, it's still a double helix, okay? Now, during DNA replication, as it, is, as it unwinds, what happens now, as I've told you, mRNA will just go inside. Okay, and then it's going to use one template of a DNA strand. Okay, now it goes to the one DNA strand and then it, it is copied into, it, it, it actually takes away a particular information. It codes for particular information. And then once it, co it's co it, co it has coded the message for protein synthesis, it leaves what it leaves the nucleus as mRNA and then that mRNA here it leaves the nucleus through the the nuclear pore these are pores found on the membrane on this nuclear membrane so the mRNA will leave what the nucleus and go to attach itself in uh, onto the to the ribosome and then what happens now your your your, your cordons or your triplet bases are now exposed they're waiting for the the anticordons to come and connect to them to form amino acids okay now what happens is that now once the mrna is now attached to the ribosome the trna will go collect a particular or specific amino acids Okay, now remember that tRNA also has what we call an anticodon, as I've stated, which is also a triplet of bases. So these uh, triplets of bases, they have to actually connect to the triplet bases found on the mRNA, which are your codons. Now, each triplet bases, each triplet base has to actually correspond to each uh, so each anticodon will have to actually uh, be connected, be connected to each codon to form amino acids. Now, as these amino acids are being formed, we actually see certain bonds that are going to come and join these amino acids together to form a polypeptide chain or what we call a protein. Then 
That's it, guys. As simple as that. That's how proteins are produced. Thank you, guys, for watching. I hope you understood everything. If you have further questions, please comment down below. And I hope you're going to understand what I explained. Please repeat watching the video so that you understand more. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you so much, guys, for the support that you've been giving me. Bye-bye.